How are you, sir? Thank you. How are you celebrating? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a long journey for you guys, right? Yes. Have you been enjoying it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've also been participating as well as you have been. Uh, but I guess many of you are doing it more than I am doing. So, but I, from what I've observed, I think um, you guys are very enthusiastic. Uh, very often you don't get to be reminded what to do and when to do it, which I think uh, you deserve all the accolades. <laughs> so if you don't mind, please give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> All right, so uh, I would like us to be as participatory as possible. I think that's how uh, we will get the best of what we are going to do here. I believe that where I'm seated now is not because I know more than anybody who is seated here. It's just because um, I have something I want to say, and I believe the best way to potentiate it is to also hear what you have to say. And so that way we, we, we make a good recipe, right? and we cook a good meal. All right, so uh, before I get started, uh, who knows the similarity between these two pictures? Who is that? Uh, who is this here? Anyway, who, is that, who is that person? Mary, right? And who is this other guy? This. Who is, who is that? Me and my mom? So who knows what the similarities, or the similarity is, or the similarities are? No, between the two pictures. <laughs> Maybe you, you give him the microphone. <laughs> I said I don't know the other one, the other lady there. Okay. The white lady, but I know the one I can see. <laughs> the black one and the small boy there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was behind the camera one day and a friend was doing a show. So I was recording and I said, Bamisha, you are I know you are behind the camera but I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> so you are blacker than the camera. I'm the black of black. <laughs> I didn't waste time to remind him that I'm black but not bond. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there may be so many similarities, and I do not mean to insult anybody's uh, intelligence or upbringing or anything, but the only one that I will tell you today, so we can move on and we settle it very fast, <laughs> is that you see, while every other mothers were giving birth to children, these two gave birth to legends. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a quick one and so today we'll be talking about the making of legends the making of legends or you may want to say the making of a legend uh in english language the legend um has probably two meanings the first is when it's talking about a story. The second is when it's talking about a person. Uh, either ways, without a person, a story will never be. So that means uh, the subject will always be the most important, not necessarily the object. So when you're talking even about a story, we'll be talking about who is the object, who is the subject of the story. So when, we're, when, when you're reading probably some chronicles or you're reading history, there's always somebody who the story is about. So when you're uh, probably reading about the legends of um, uh, Hercules, or you're reading about the legend of um, Alexander the Great, or you're reading about the legend of uh, uh, Karl Marx, whoever it may be, or whoever it may be, or whoever she may be, so I don't sound sexist. <laughs> In a world where we are fighting for um, equity, gender equity. And by the way, you know, America, for the first time in a, in, in a long while, voted a lot of uh, female to their uh, Congress yesterday. So I think it's a right step for the women. Let's give them a round of applause. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, history has not been kind to many of you guys. Uh, history understates 
um, what you do. It underappreciates your value and the role you play. I personally know that uh, without women, okay, without women, the world will not be. <laughs> And we've seen that through, I mean, uh, maybe it's not, I'm going off topic now, but I think sometimes we just need to take a, some time out to appreciate them especially. <laughs> but the only thing I want to ask you people is that uh, there are at least five Mother's Day <laughs> in a year. <laughs> Please, that one Father's Day, <laughs> celebrate us too. <laughs> All right, so back to our topic, uh, the making of legends. So. When we're talking about legends, either it's a story or a person, it's always about the person, uh, either who the story is about or who makes the story. And so, you know, in life, it's often said that there are two sets of people, those who make things happen and those who watch things happen, those who make history and those who tell the story. <laughs> so I'm sure you're already deciding who you want to be of the two, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So do you want to be, sir? I want to, um, what's it called? Watch the story. Tell the story. You want to tell the story? No, no, no. Yeah. What am I even saying? You want to be a history maker. Yeah, you want to be a history maker. So another way you can say that is that in, some, in life, a lot of people are missed while others are amazing. Mm. And truthfully, it follows the 80-20 principle. 80% are missed. Less than 20% in the actual sense are amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the kind of meetings we come and we get to ask ourselves, do we want to be amazed? We just, oh, Bill Gates is doing wonders. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the next guy is building the next thing. Oh, this guy is making his, oh, who's in both? We just be amazed all, 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 all through life. And you see, that's what church has built. Uh, of recent, people who are amazed. Mm. They just sit down in the congregation and one man is amazing. Mm. <laughs> the rest are amazed. Mm. Mm. So he sits, he stands up, sit down, does some gimmicks, does some miracle talks, they are just clapping. All of them are amazed. Mm. They papa him, they mama, they do everything. Mm. They are just amazed. Mm. They go and tell the story, but it's just one person mm. who is amazing. But the real story is that of a 12, of a 12, this guy, this woman, near about that, you saw that woman I showed you, I showed you the other time, that was standing, uh, pictured beside my mom. You remember her son? Yeah. Of course, maybe that's not her, but at least that's the picture, that representation. <laughs> but remember her son, right? You remember that the guy had 12 disciples. Mm. And of course, he was the only one amazing. And there was a reason that we've spoken about. The fact that he was carrying what? Light. Yes. But those other ones were not what? Were not carrying it. Mm. But do you remember what happened in the book of Acts, chapter 1? Mm. What happened? Uh, was that chapter 1 or chapter 2? When the Spirit came in. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit came in. So it means that from that point in time, they stopped being what? Amazed. Amazed. They started being? Amazed. Okay. So you remember that from that point, a lot of people, according to how the Bible recorded it, were coming from every part of the world, different tongues. And those guys now, who used to be the amazed ones, started being the amazing ones, and other people were what? Amazed. Yes. <laughs> so it means that if you go to chapter 4, of course, that's not my topic. We'll still go, but I'm just trying to lay a foundation so you can understand why the decisions you are making now must be concrete. Mm. Why it must be concrete. If you go to chapter 4, they've, after being amazing for a long time, people were amazed, and they wanted them to stop being amazing. And those guys were trying to defend themselves that, no, we, we can't stop being amazing. These things we've seen with our eyes, we've touched, right? And we've, uh, we've related with. So how can you stop us from uh, manifesting the, the attributes that we've gained from being with this person? And you remember what the people said to them. They said they took note of them. 
that after they've heard, these people who once used to be amazed speak. Mm. The Bible recorded that they took note of them that they were, they were, according to the literal meaning, that they were idiots mm. <laughs> and unlearned. Mm. But after listening to the fluency of their speech, the sense that it made, the Bible recorded that they were amazed and they took note that they had been with Christ. Are we getting it? Yes. So it means that from the point that you and I encounter the light, now that we have the understanding of what the light is, that the light we carry inside of us must be put to use. Then what decision must we make? To be amazed or to be amazing? Do you understand my point? So it means that it is not from the point. Of course, DSS is still teaching a lot. Even myself, I'm still amazed at the things he's teaching. <laughs> but the idea becomes the conversion must begin to take place immediately. That it is from the point you hear it that you stop being amazed. The point it enters into you and you convert it and it becomes an idea, you must start building points. You must start making the connection of how you are going to be amazing. So that when you leave here and you get back, like uh, DSA was talking about you, that the last time you came and you went back, they said your preaching changed. <laughs> of course, it's not like DSA preaches to you every day, but there was something you got inside of you that changed you and probably you approached to things and people could start seeing. And so that is the whole idea. So that, for instance, you went to uh, see the um, Pastor Christina's um, rehab. How many of us were amazed? <laughs> so, but where must it stop? Where must that being amazed stop? Okay. <laughs> so it means when you go back, you are going to be what? Amazing. To be amazing. All right. You are going to be what? Amazing. So the idea becomes that everything you need to be amazing, you have. The realization of it, of course, you will continue to get. But what I'm trying to say, in essence, is that there are two sets of people in this world. Those who tell the story and those who make the story. Those who are amazed and those who are amazing. So when we tell the story of legends, when we tell the story of legends, the question would be, how many legends do we know? compared to those who have ever lived on this earth. Okay, I want you to look at your country. How many legends do you have in your country? Or probably before we go, who, who, maybe someone can define to us who a legend is. Does someone want to help us out? I'd say um, a legend is someone who has left an indelible mark on the signs of on the sands of time, yeah. for humanity that we keep looking back and wonder how, in spite of all the challenges that they were subjected to, they still thrived and emptied themselves for their world. Thank you, thank you. I think someone else wants to say something. Um, my understanding of a legend is someone who uh, is so outstanding in their achievements against all odds that they, it takes years or centuries to surpass them. Um, there is a, a coach, I come from Nottingham. Okay. There is a, a team called Nottingham Forest. There was a, a coach called Brian Clough. He is, is a legend in Nottingham because of his achievements winning the European, ch uh, European Champions Cup yes. and uh, Premier League titles and so on. So his uh, feat has not yet been surpassed. So he's still a legend. Even if it is surpassed. Yeah, yeah. Because of what he's done. Yes. He's reached the pinnacle of a social structure. Yeah. And oftentimes, many times, these social structures are not defined 
until the legends arise. Yeah. Nobody would have known what it meant, really, to do civil disobedience until Mahatma Gandhi started it. Then, from studying Mahatma Gandhi, we can now find that uh, there's a uh, Martin Luther King who can follow and then do more, right? Mm -hmm. So, usually, this social structure, uh, sometimes they are not even in existence. But what they do is that eventually, because of the way they've lived their lives, or the way they live their lives, because we, are, we have living legends, right? Because of the way they live their lives, they are able to sometimes create, sometimes uh, within an existing social structure, reach the pinnacle. Part time. Part time. Yeah, part time. Because, you know, life works by uh, set three parables, all things being equal. But the way life works is that <laughs> all things are never equal. <laughs> Do you understand my point? Yes. All right. So thank you for your definition of a legend. I think that works really well. So I had said earlier, although more on a, on a more jovial level, uh, that um, only two mothers gave birth to legends, right? <laughs> but the real question is that are legends born? No. Or are they made? They're made. Yeah. They are made not because sometimes people do not have some attributes that are born in them. Like it's just like asking the questions and the, the question, are leaders born? Of course, there are some natural attributes that people have that give them the tendency mm -hmm. to be leaders or to be better leaders than others. But however, the idea becomes everyone is born, people are made. Do you understand my point? Mm -hmm. Everyone is born people are made. Mm -hmm. That's why it is impossible that the house makes the king. Mm -hmm. But the king, the palace does not make any man king. Mm -hmm. But the king can make any man what? Any house what? A palace. Because it is who the king has become mm -hmm. that makes whatever he is around him. Mm -hmm. So the idea becomes that everyone is born. But it is the things that they go through that makes them the personality they eventually grow up to become. So, what am I saying in essence? You can have a king, and of course, you know how many kings have ruled through history. How many of them do we call legends? We have many presidents, right? How many in your country, in my country, can we say these guys are legends? And we have someone like Awu Lowo, who till today, though regrettably, is often called the best president Nigeria never had. I don't know if you are following my train of thought. So the, the answer becomes that legends indeed are made because it is the sum total of their life that make them who they are. It is a what? The sum total of their lives that make them who they are. When you read Olonwa, how many of us are, have read Olonwa? Or probably have heard of DSA story. You see that young boy come from Idomila, and his story, and now he's here, and everybody is coming to see him and to learn from him. And now we can, he can say of some sort, or in, his, in a very big way, he's a what? A legend. Not because of where he was born or how he was born, but because of how he has lived and what he has made of himself. So the next question will be, when can one become a legend? Is it ever too early or ever too late to become a legend? Shall I tell the story of a man I think he was in his, he was past his 60s. I think his son was sick and uh, he wanted to take him to the hospital, but there was a rock that was blocking the road. Maybe the guy died eventually. And so he took, he dedicated the rest of his life to breaking that rock to create a road. 
Stanley stupid. But after many years, there was a road. Mm. At what age did he become a savior of his people? Shall we tell the story of another man who is community had been suffering from oil spillage. He was above 62. Then I think above 50. Then he decided enough of this uh, uh, nonsense. They spill oil and they don't compensate, they don't try to clean. Then the guy took, <laughs> started studying every law book he laid his hands upon. Graduated a lawyer and then sued <laughs> The oil corporation at one. At what age? It is never too early to become a legend. And it is never too late to become a legend. I could tell so many things about legends. I could tell the story of a lot of legends and what can inspire you from them. But there will always be stories. But what I want to tell you today, what I want us to discuss today, is the making of legends. What are the things to do? The steps to, do, to take. The things to begin to consider. To say, now, these are the action plans to transfer myself from the spot of being amazed to being amazing. So what are the first, what's the first thing legends do? Legends define. I want to tell your neighbor, they define. They define. They define. They define. They define. Legends define. Legends define. So from my story of the guy who, to, who decided to break the rock, what was the first thing he, de he defined? The obstacle. The obstacle. The second thing it defined how to break the obstacle. So it defined what? The problem. What the obstacle was. And what was it he was going to achieve? Access. So when he looked at the mountain, he said, This is the mountain that does not allow us access, that allows us to travel so many miles when we could just pass through. Then he defined what he was going to do. He was going to break the rock. And you see, this is very easy. To define what is the easiest. Tell your neighbor it's the easiest. It's the easiest. Does anyone know why it is the easiest thing to do? Sir? Because it's stock. It's stock? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Right. It's just talk at that just point. To talk. Just thought. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thought. The action okay. Yeah. Yeah. hasn't taken place. I, I think because there are a lot of problems all around us. Okay. All it takes is for one to look around a little bit, and there are problems everywhere. Okay. So once you identify that problem, you go to the next level, which is your motivation. Why? What the purpose for you to remove that obstacle? All right. Thank you. You see, the two points I have are very valid. But <laughs> even for me, I was coming from the angle of if, um, if wishes were horses, even the what? Beggars even beggars, beggars will climb. It's easy to say, I want to be the richest man in the world. It's so easy to say, I'm going to write a book next year. It's very easy to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. It is very easy. Because all you need to do is to place your head 12 o'clock in the afternoon and you will do what? Daydream. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, your dreams are valid. <laughs> okay? But this is the easiest step. So, even if you daydream, tell your neighbor, even if you daydream, you're on course to becoming a legend. Yeah, so 
uh, we are not going to despise anybody's dreams. <laughs> but it's just the easiest. And a lot of people get stuck at this point. Because it's easy to say, this is what I'm going to do. But where it gets hard is to know why. <laughs> why do you want to do it? Why am I going to break the rock? I've lost my only son. Why am I going to break the rock? I'm 60 years old. I've lived with this pollution all of my life. Why am I going to study all of the law books? How many of us have read the book Insulted by Ungodliness? By Dr. Sonia Dilajan. Okay, maybe when you read it, you will also be able to get a lot of why. In, in a lot of questions and things going on around you. You see why is the most important question, is the groundbreaker for the legend. To be able to answer himself, why? Because a lot of things, a, lo a lot of times, the things that make a legend a legend benefits him nothing. <laughs> Maybe you should sit back and digest that. A lot of times, the things that make a legend a legend benefits him what? Nothing. Nothing. I want you to look at somebody with all the ambulance you can muster. I want you to look at someone. Just stare at them. Stare at them. Say, a tree does not eat of its own fruit. <laughs> so if I'm not going to eat of my fruit, why then am I going to bear fruit? Why? Why am I doing this? The inability to answer why is the single most popular reason, if I will use that word, why people die ordinary. Because it is why that keeps you going when the going gets tough. It is why that will keep you on your feet when everybody wants you down. It is why that will make you pursue that interest when the same people you are doing it for don't appreciate. Mm. Jesus was going to die. For who? <laughs> for mankind. They came to save them. But they were the ones shouting what? Crucify him. The same people you came to save. Hmm. Of course, you know, many times one has to be able to draw, or one has to be able to draw the delineation between offering help when people don't want it, and because that can be tough. And that's why why must be defined. Because you see, when you are trying to help people who do not want your help, you, they make you a victim of your own goodwill. Hmm. So, now, until you are able to see, until your why is greater than the threat, and than the threat that uh, what you are doing po uh, possesses, then you will never be able to go far in your proposition. I don't know if you are following me. So, for instance, the man you are come here to listen to today or that we have come to listen to at this HMT a lot of times you could just google him and you see lots of scandals tomorrow morning you could wake up and someone will say this and that at the end of the day you see nobody wants to be associated with someone who is being alleged against. Mm. Because no matter how impure we are, we want to maintain the sanctimonity mm. of ourselves mm. and to say we are clean and we never associate with people who are scandalous. Mm. Quote, unquote. 
Do you understand my point? Yes. Yeah. But at that point, something tells you that his life, for instance, is his life. Mm -hmm. Why am I listening mm -hmm. to him? Mm -hmm. And you say, this is why I'm listening to him, and this is why I'm going to come here. Mm -hmm. Let the whole world stand against you. You will be here. I don't know if you understand my point. Yes. Yes. Because the same principle the man is using. Mm. Because what he knows benefits him. Mm. And when people are saying things against him, maximum what they want him to do is to shut up, Abby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if he shuts up and he does not teach again, who, 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 loses? who, who loses? We lose. We lose. Hmm. And you see, basically, this principle of why is so principal in everything we do in life. Yes. Now, let me take it to marriage. How many of us know that the pain of love and that the that the risk of loving is in the pain of loving? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but until you are able to answer why, how do you go through the challenges in your marriage? How do you understand and respect the individuality of the person that you are dealing with? This is what business people know and rich people know, that they can even be fighting with themselves, right? Mm. The two businessmen, their partners, they are fighting, they are on background, but they will still go for business lunch together. Mm. And the question is why? <laughs> <laughs> the stakes are high. If they bring their fight into the business, it will collapse. Mm -hmm. I will pay the two of them. Am I right? Yes. So they understand why. And so no matter how much the beef is, <laughs> they will do what? They will go for business lunch together. They will smile together mm -hmm. because the company must not go down. Mm -hmm. So the same principle, you see it every aspect of life. That is what makes legends. The answer to the question, why am I doing what? I am doing why am I doing what I want to do why am I going to do what I propose to do why can't I stop this thing even though everybody is saying no don't do it if you remember the scripture says for the joy that was set before him he did what he endured the cross why <laughs> so before you start and you see of course we'll, we'll talk about that later but you see that DSA says before I start anything I already finished it in my mind mm. so when you experience the joy of finishing in your mind through the process you've gone through why mm. so of course you are seeing the joy of the finishing mm. so throw stones at me throw stones at me throw stones at me I have seen I have seen I have seen that's why Martin Luther on his last speech said, I have been to the mountain top. And even though I may not get there with you, but I want to promise you that we as a people will get there. Amen. So you tell me that guy will not go and protest? <laughs> why? Because he has seen. So now that what he's seen, of course, it gets us to enlightenment too. Others might not have seen what he's seen. But he has seen it, so he has a why. Stronger, probably, than all the whys he's ever had. So, to that guy, to the guy who's found a why, nothing is stronger, not even death. So, nothing is stronger than a guy who is convinced. So the only thing stronger than a sound mind is the will of man to do something. And the will will never be activated until the man fully understands why. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Why? Why do soldiers, uh, why did the kings fight? They want to expand their territory, right? When they expand their territory, they will have more resources. Mm. So tell me, why wouldn't they go the extra mile <laughs> to fight? So, 
basically, it's easy to go through what? But anyone who goes through why and comes out at the end of it, and comes out at the end of it, any guy, any person who goes through why and can come out at the end of it, that guy is 50% complete. Because that is the point. You already know the power that will push you through the journey. You already know, for instance, you want to go through a journey, you know already that you have your fuel and engine oil, it's set. But why is why even more important? Why am I stressing so much on why? It's because of the next thing. Motivation versus inspiration. Can someone tell me what they know as a difference between both? Motivation. Okay. Motivation. <clears throat> Motiva Motivation comes from the inside. Okay. It's something that would. Motivation comes from the inside. You have to stay yourself up. You know, it could be from the moment you wake up. That's. That interest to want to do that thing, that, that energy from the inside that's going to push you to do what it is you know you need to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas inspiration could be things on the external that inspire you, that give you that, create that awareness in you and give you that um, guidance. <coughs> it could be maybe from other people that have done certain things that could give you that staring towards what it is that you're trying to achieve. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Then. I think motivation is something that comes from within, the power within. Mm -hmm. I would say your inner self, while inspiration comes from the source, mm -hmm. the source of all life, mm -hmm. the creator himself, mm -hmm. to your spirit man. And when that comes together and they work in unison, then there is nothing you cannot achieve. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, please and pause it. I would say that uh, inspiration is the idea, motivation is the driving force. Okay, okay. Okay, I think that's all right. Or oh, someone wants to say something. All right. So, what you, uh, what you said, uh, they are very true. Uh, especially when you're talking about inspiration, but you, you limited yours to inspiration from God. God and spirit of man. Uh, but it's still uh, from the divine. Yes. Yeah, the divine influence. That, that's on that part. But even at that, where that uh, is limited is that, uh, okay, it's just general, but it's, not, it's just that you limited it to inspiration from, from the divine. But you know that people can inspire you. Even uh, inanimate objects can inspire you. Yeah. Events can inspire you. A lot of other things can inspire you. So, but I particularly like uh, yours, uh, Madame Latitia. Uh, did I get it right? Yes, or mo eh? Or mo or mo or mo okay. I particularly like yours uh, because. It clearly states the ac ac accurately, quite accurately, the difference. Inspiration is always external. It never comes from within. It never. So inspiration never answers why. Inspiration only shows you what. Every time. So when you look at DSA and you see the things he's is done, and you say, wow, you get the goosebumps. You are inspired. Then you say, I want to do, you are charged up. But really, you will notice that it never really answers in you. <laughs> why? So that's why you get inspired. You leave, the moment you are leaving this, <laughs> the gate, everything is gone. Because it's never, it's never been from the inside. It, there's no stamp of it in you. Even if it is from God. That's why we forget a lot of things God told us. That's why 
even though a lot of wrong preachings go on in the Nigerian church. But today, do you know why? The simple reason why, if you preach the truth today, sir, people still don't get it. Do you know why? Because they never had a question to the answer you were given. You didn't get that? <laughs> so, so, Pastor, uh, Pastor Nero preaches a very wonderful sermon full of a lot of rhema. But people still don't get it. After two hours, people have forgotten. The same thing with education. We listen to lectures and we forget. Why? Because it, never, it did not answer any question inside. Because the only things you get to remember are the things that answered questions that you have. So you now see that either motivation, either what inspiration, it has to answer something inside. And so often the question that it answers inside, when we talk about or that it's answering inside, when we talk about inspiration and motivation, it's not what. It is why. So inspiration never answers why. Inspiration answers what. It shows you what is possible. And you say, wow, I can do this. Wow, I like this. I want to do it. You, you admire it and you say, no, I can't. So you, we read the stories of Mahatma Gandhi. We say, yes, we can. But when, they, when we face the challenges Mahatma Gandhi face, we do not. We pull back. <laughs> so the question is, how many of us can spend 27 years in prison? Uh, uh, but we want to be the next Mandela. <laughs> do you understand? So inspiration never really answers why. It's not that it's not important. It is important. Sometimes we need to see models. Sometimes we need to see people who have done things and say, and say if this person can do this. I remember when I wanted to write WIAC. It was looking so big. But there was a very short guy who was my senior then. I, you know, I'm sure I was very short too, but the guy was even shorter than me. <laughs> so I remember I was in SS2. I was saying, if this guy, eh, if he can pass WIAC and he's short like this, I will pass it. <laughs> This one that I stole, if it's this tall, and you can pass why I'll pass it. So I saw different people of different shapes and sizes, and I know, of course, it was impossible that probably all of them are better than me, but they are doing things, you understand? So that also gave me the assurance that my case cannot be any different. I just need to do what they are doing, which is to, to study. Yeah, I know you say his case is different. <laughs> <laughs> I think the shield load is there for this year's dominion. <laughs> All right, so now looking at them, I'm inspired, right? That if these guys can achieve it, I can achieve it. But if I did not find a why, why do I want to pass? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will not pass. Oh. Because I will not do what is needed to be done. So that's why motivation goes deeper because motivation answers in you the question why why do you want to do it and once you find an answer to it that becomes the anchor for everything you get to do do you understand my point yes. so it becomes the anchor what motivates you so the real question to ask yourself is not what inspires you or who inspires you it is what motivates you what motivates you Life is not bed of roses. Mm -hmm. And even if it were, every rose has got a thorn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you got that. Yes. Life is not what? A bed of roses. And even if it were? Every rose has got a thorn. <laughs> so the question will be what will keep you moving? when nothing else does. Mm -hmm. It is the motivation. Mm -hmm. And it comes from answering the question, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And that's the question you must begin to ask before you start any project, before you do anything. You know, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. You see, when the Bible says, God is not a man that should lie, right? Not the son of man that should repent. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is 
it, 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 it's on our unfaithfulness. We never make him unfaithful. The question is why? Why is it that someone will be unfaithful to you, but you will yet what? Remain faithful. Why? Motivation is the principle behind character. Why you don't change when people change? Why you don't change your program even when people don't support it? Not because you are not malleable or you are not understand, no, but just you know why you are doing this thing. And you say to yourself that if I am the last man standing here, I will stand alone. Mm. It is the principle behind people that stand for truth throughout all generation. I will lose friends, Abby, but there is a why. Mm. You know, there is a we say I'm playing to a one man audience. And my audience is God. Mm. If God be pleased, <laughs> that's all. Have you seen his why? In that statement, have you seen his why? Yes. You know, when you look at the Oyedekbos of this world, the Adeboys of this world, those are very wonderful connections to have. Really. <laughs> but to say, I don't care about the connection. I don't care if I lose it. Mm -hmm. I only care that truth be spoken mm -hmm. and that I please my master. That is why. That is simply why. People may not understand it, but you, as a person of character, must know it. And that is the Number one most important ingredient in the making of legends. So the next question that looks like it is when. I hope I'm on time. <laughs> when. Yeah, legends do set time. They know when they want to do something. They know exactly what time they want to get this thing achieved. But the next important question is that do legends always meet their target time? <laughs> and you see, this is how to undo disappointment. Many people don't know how, and so they give up on their dreams. Just because you did not achieve it the first time does not mean you will never achieve it. Are you listening to me? Yes. Am I communicating to somebody? Yes. I remember the story of... Um, um, Michael Jordan. Do you know he was not picked? <laughs> in, the, in the draft that was conducted at first, he was not picked. He went back and started training more. He started training more. And today, when we talk about the great test of all times, we talk about who? Michael Jordan. Even if some people will say there's another person, but he's always constant in the argument. Yes, it's true. I understand. Next year, you want to get this project done. But what happens when you don't get it done next time? Do you give up? No. Why won't you give up? <laughs> exactly. Give me a high five, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so you see how legends are made. So legends don't always meet their target. Should we leave it to uh, Nelson Mandela? Do you think he wanted to spend 27 years in prison? He wanted full independence that day. The first day he went there. Mm. But don't waste me their target. So you must realize that of course it's good to set time. It's good to have action plans. Mm. But just sometimes because the life, uh, because life is not, it doesn't work by how we view them sometimes. You just got to realize that, that I feel this time does not make me a failure. You know I have a particular saying and it's a very big part of my life. I say, you don't want to know the number of times I have failed. But who knows my greatest failure? Can you guess my greatest failure? <laughs> no. <laughs> my greatest failure is that I failed to give up. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I said you do not want to know the number of times I have failed in life. But my biggest failure is that I failed to give up.
Are you getting it? Yeah. So, you know, I failed. That, that's failure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea is I failed to give up. And that's my biggest failure in life. So what I'm trying to say is that failures will always come. But you must make sure that the biggest failure that you record in life is that they say about you that he failed to give up. You want to say something? Yes, please. So everybody was just going, but there's one man that <laughs> uh, he refused to give up. But the, 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 the person that have won have already won, but he said he must complete his own, you know. He refused to give, he must complete it. But wow. the person that have got the first, have got the first, and second, and third, but he refused to give up to, to reach at the end. Yes, simply because that person understood that this is a race, but I am running my race. I think they want to fix the microphone, right? Okay, I don't, someone wants to say something. Yeah, please pass the microphone to the box. Sir. I know you have mentioned the name of the great legend like Michael Jordan. Yes, sir. Please let's not forget um, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. He did, um, never gave up. Yes. Muhammad Ali became world champion three times. Mm -hmm. And the most interesting part of Muhammad Ali till today, it's not necessarily because skillfully is the, the best boxer. That's not why he's called the greatest of all time. But because he's stood by what? A conviction. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the crown, right? They, they took his belt away yes. and it was taken to prison. I don't know if he eventually went, but I knew they recommended prison time for him. And then he came back mm -hmm. to get the, the belt back. Mm -hmm. Defeated obstacles. You know? I did a video once and I was saying, uh, watch the spear. Watch the spear. Uh, I, I called it, don't, don't fear the spear. Don't fear the spear. You know, a lot of times we want to say, spare me from the spear. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> what the Roman infantry that they did not know was that it was going to pierce the body. He thought he was killing. He didn't know he was just going to release the gift. Mm -hmm. So he, was, uh, he did not know he was unwrapping the box. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand my point. Yeah. So sometimes, because you know what you carry on the inside and that you are a gift, you... And you know why? You do not fear. You do not fear the fire because you know you are a knife. What will happen when you go through the fire? You get sharper. So you don't say because the, the file is coarse, you don't go through the fire. Mm. You know you are a knife. You get sharper. You don't fear the furnace because the furnace is very hot. Because you know you are what? You are a gold ore. Mm. So when you come out of the furnace, you become what? You become gold. You know why? You do not fear Jetseman and you do not fear Calvary because you know the moment you go through there, you become what? The Savior. Wow. Do you understand? Yes. You get it. So why we keep you through the times of adversity? And even though you miss your target, why must always tell you that you can always do it again? So it's never too late to become a legend. Tell your neighbor, it's never too late to become a legend. It's never too late. And that's the beauty. When DSA writes a book, how to recover your lost what? Years. Yes. This is exactly what it's talking about. Because how can you be recovering a lost time? It means time has gone, you've missed your target, but it's telling you you can recover it, and then what? And then still become who you want to be. It's never too late. Never too late. So I'm challenging somebody, that dream you have, Go back to the drawing table. Remember why you started it in the first yes. place. Mm. I remember some people frustrated you out of business, but that business is meant to save. It's meant to provide for some people. Get back to it. Mm. Uh, yes, that NGO you were doing. Mm. Someone cheated you and you said, no, these people are too, untr uh, are too uh, untrustworthy. I can't do this again. Mm. 
go back to the drawing board. Remember why you started. And you become a success. Don't worry. Just remember why. And then the next part of this is what? Because they know why, they know when, they have strategy and tactics. They have what? Strategy and tactics. Okay. So who will tell me the difference between strategy and tactics before I show what I have on the screen? The difference between, you know, they sound alike. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so strategy is like the overall plan. Okay. Tactics is what you employ in case something changes in between. Yeah, even if, not so, even if something doesn't change, tactics is what, how you carry out the strategy yeah. at so a given time. Yeah. Do you understand? How you, so the, yeah, you want to say something? No, okay. Maybe yeah. Steps. yeah, so strategy is a carefully defined and detailed plan to achieve a long-term goal, yeah. right? And uh, that is the position and impact you want to achieve in your market. Your market is uh, your sphere of influence. Mm where you want to do whatever it is you want to do. And tactics is a method you use to achieve your short-term goals. So generally, you would have a strategy of how do you want to do this. And let me tell you, in having a strategy, many times you will never have the full picture. Yeah. Yes. So knowing that you are never going to have the full picture is part of the strategy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes taking the first step. Mm -hmm. Re really. Really? Really? Because of what use is it, will it be if God gave you the first action plan, you didn't take it, and you're waiting for the second? Mm. I don't know if you get my point. Yes. I gave you something, you didn't use it, then why should I give you the next? Mm. So the whole strategy, for me, my biggest strategy in life is that I have submitted myself to the will of God. Mm. Really. That's my biggest strategy in life. Uh, time will permit me one day to tell the story of how, of how I stood up and started sponsoring kids, not knowing that that is where I, I was going to find a sponsor for myself. Mm. <laughs> I was not doing it to get a sponsor. No, no. But it was in the place of doing it that I found someone who was saying, don't worry. I'm going to take care of your tuition. Mm. Wow. <laughs> May I'll be able to tell the story one day. But the biggest strategy in, in that is that I have, I have submitted myself to what? To the will of God. Mm. What I have to do part time, I do it, which is what? My tactics, mm. which is if I have to do something now, I, and I love working with plain sheet, I have them at home. So I'm able to draw. And there's something here, I don't know, but that's how, that's how I walk. I call it uh, spirit storming. Sp spirit storming. Oh, spirit storming. <laughs> yeah. So I, ideally, uh, uh, when you want to think and you have paper, you just, you're just writing. But for me, spirit storming is I'm praying in tongues and I have my paper. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm praying in tongues and I start writing. I'm just praying in tongues and the ideas are flowing and I'm writing them down. So, you see, that's principally, uh, you call that conversion, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm praying in tongues and I'm writing. And uh, for me, especially when I even still used to attend many of these churches, uh, when there are wasted energies all around, that is the best place I function. It can be in classroom. When probably the lecturer is not around and everybody is talking, say wasted energy, just pick your paper and you are flowing. This book, I wrote most of it in the class. Wow. I go with my, I write with my, I, I wrote this one particularly with my hand, not on computer. So someone typed it out. <laughs> <laughs> so when everybody is just doing whatever they have to do, I have my paper and I start writing. One of the most brilliant songs I've ever written was, uh, I remember we were to have ophthalmology class and uh, Anu got a material to read and did not tell us. 
<laughs> so when we came, we were just answering, but we were answering off key to the teacher because she wanted us to answer from this particular topic. Now, it was not that she gave the textbook. Anu just, due to his own due diligence, found the book and it was interesting to him and he read from it. So his own answers were clicking. <laughs> 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 but when we answer, the teacher was looking at us like this. <laughs> so from there, I just started a fiction story in my head as of that time. Mm. So I started writing a song, which for me, even when I look at it till today, is relevant. And the lyrics are, Do men move away, denying me when I need them most? Do friends block my way, making me their new prey? Yet I'll rejoice because I have you. I'm so glad you have my back. One with God is all and all. On his word, I can stand tall. It's a reggae song. <laughs> it's a reggae song. So the lyrics of the song is, though men move away, denying me when I need them most, though friends block my way, making me their new prey, yet I'll rejoice because I have you. I'm so glad you have my back. One with God is all and all. On his word, I can stand tall. <laughs> so just in the lecture there, in the class there, I wrote, just wrote that. So being able to use uh, wasted energy. <laughs> so the basis of my story is that tactics will let you know how to be able to maneuver, how to be able to do what you need to do part-time. Mm. But the overall strategy has to be how do you want to get to where you are going to get to. And sometimes we just know where we want to get to, but we are never going to know the roads in between mm -hmm. until, until we finish the next one, this one, then we know the next one. You understand my point? Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I love to use, one of my tactics is to use wasted energy. I love to use wasted energy. So a lot of wasted energies happen in church. So those times I used to go to, I go with my pen and paper, <laughs> and I'm right. I have a lot of poems I've written in the church. <laughs> yeah, because they are singing and the energy is just there because they are, they are not even using it. So there's just wasted energy everywhere, goosebumps, the feelings everywhere. And if you know a writer, most writers write from the state of melancholy, especially if you're a poet. You write from the state of melancholy. So uh, wasted energies usually create such states for writers. So I, I know that. So for me, it's one, it's one tactic. And so many times you find out that when you are even praying, it's like you are depressed to the state of melancholy. I don't know if you've noticed that. When you are praying. Have you ever noticed that? That... Yeah, it's, you you do, you hardly you hardly praying and laughing. <laughs> it feels like every part of you is depressed. Yes. Why? Because as of that time, there's a superimposition of a superior force. So your humanity is depressed, and you can feel it in your brain. Do you understand my point? So for me, that's how spirit storming works too. So I connect with the divine. There's a depression of the activities of my brain. But the activity can work well to write mm. and to process the thoughts or, or the ideas that are coming. Mm. But basically, I'm saying, God, what do you have? And I'm able to write them down. And it works for me. Maybe you can try it, but it does work for me. I know I get clarity of vision and what to do next. So for me, my strategy is to submit myself to the will of God. You know why? I discovered that a lot of times we have a fixed pattern of how we think God should operate. Mm. Yes. And so a lot of times God just don't operate that way because he is God. And so we conclude that since it's not working within the parameters of my expectation, this can't be God. I don't know if you get my point. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. So for me, I've, I now know that God can work anyhow. Mm -hmm. And so I just want that... Um, testimony with my spirit that this is God in, at work mm -hmm. and I'm at peace. Mm -hmm. Even if the situation is unpleasant, mm -hmm. 
So for me, that's my big strategy in life. You can define what yours would be, but that's what legends do. They have a big strategy and then they follow tactics. War generals, if you read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, you will see that they always have a strategy and then they have their what, tactics. tactics. Businessmen always have what? Their strategy and then mm -hmm. they have the tactics. So it's the general principle for legends mm -hmm. that you must have your strategy and then you have your what? Your mm -hmm. tactics. tactics. All right, so let's go to the next one. <coughs> Can someone please read this? To ask questions both introspectively and outside himself, retrospectively and also into the future <coughs> is an attestation to the fact that one is not merely existing on earth, but is actively living. Is that clear? Yes. Or do you want me to explain? Yes, yes you have still yes, explain. Yes. Yes. To ask questions <coughs> both introspectively and outside himself. So a legend must what? Define what, why, the motivation. <coughs> I w is this a motivation? Am I motivated or am I inspired? Mm -hmm. Must ask when, must ask what do, does he do when he misses targets. So those are introspective questions. And then must ask questions also what? Outside himself. What are the circumstances around what, is, what does the environment dictate? You know? And how do I move with it? So the legend also must ask questions about his past and things that have happened before. That's why a man said it is uh, insanity to keep doing things the same way and expecting a different what, result. So when the legend asks questions res retrospectively, he knows how things have been and why these things are happening. Then he can say, okay, I want to change this or I want to add this to this. You understand my point? Mm -hmm. And so you can look into the future. <clears throat> and so that's the ability to do that is an attestation that one is not merely existing, but is what? Is actively living. Mm -hmm. And that's what legends do. They actively live. Tell your neighbor to live is not to breathe in and breathe out. To live is to build in and give out. 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 That's what it means to live. All right. So the focus. Legends focus. I think we have to go fast now. We spent a lot of time on that. Uh, so Please, I want you to tell me which one has more focus, the laser or the allogen? The laser. Who has a different opinion? We all agree the laser? OK, but I disagree with you. Because none of them has more focus than the other. The difference is their why. So can you use an, a laser to light the street. No. no. Mm. So when you now use halogen to light the street, <laughs> which one has more focus? Halogen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Can you use your halogen to pinpoint the smallest? <laughs> no. So you find out that <coughs> they both have focus. The difference is why. Do you understand? Yeah. Because the focus is, I want to get all of this room, or I just want to get this thing. All right. So genius has been described as the ability to focus. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Never allow anybody to tell you that there's just one thing you can achieve. Never. There may be one thing that you are better off in than the others. But you are pluripotent. You can do so many more things. Yes, yes. You can do so many more things. That's why the first thing a man has to do is to discover himself. 
And the best thing a man can create is to create himself. Mm. So do you create yourself to be just one, to be good in one thing? Yes, you can. Do you create yourself to be good in so many others? Yes, you can. But the general principle of legends is that they give themselves information. And in that information, they make sure that they know so much about something and something about so much. Does that make sense? <laughs> they know so much about something and they know something about so much. So you can hardly find a legend who is ignorant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why when they say probably this president, this one president does not know economics. He doesn't have to know it. He only needs to know a little about it. That when he brings people to argue, he can make sound judgment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand my point. Yes. Because there's never going to be any of us who we know it all. Even Solomon, who knew so much, he did not know having too many wives is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So, but legends know so much about something. And know something what? About so much. The next question is the question of major and minor. One of the banes of the African society right now is that we, ma we major on the minor and minor on the major. And that's why we don't produce legends. Because you find out that you have a society that is full of mundane and inane ideas and actions. The gossip. Uh, superstition. Witches and wizard, <laughs> destiny changer. <laughs> when, when the world is moving at the speed of 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 of, of light, we are coming talking about tribalism and it is major and minor that defines those who live the rest of their lives as a victim mm. and those who stand from the place of oppression and become victors. Mm. Wow. Could you please repeat that, please? It is the principle of major and minor yes. that differentiates those who live the rest of their lives as victims mm. and those who stand even from the place of oppression to yes. become victors. Amen. Because the minor, the minor is the thing that happened to you. Mm. The major is what are you, how are you going to happen? Yeah. What are you going to do? <clears throat> the definition of what you are going to do is what takes you from what happened to you. And that's what I tried to answer in this book, but not often. Who is responsible for a man? For the outcome of a man? Is it the happenings around him? Is it the situation? Is it the people around him or the man himself? At the end of the day, you, fi you figure that the moment you can realize what are the major things and you, s you, you go for them, you will never be bothered by every dog that back at you when you are going. Whoa. Do you understand? Yes. A man that throws stones at every dog that backs never gets to his destination. Mm -hmm. So dog backing, they are there, but they are minor. Mm -hmm. Where you are going is what? It's major. So you can sit down and be saying, they are backing at me, they are backing at me, you are living as a victim. Mm. But you can remember where you are going and just keep moving. And then you become what? A victor. <laughs> All right. So they convert. And this is the most important part. But this is the important part, but... The unlocking of why, I think, was more important. Because until you get there, you never get here. So you, because you will not know how to convert ideas. Legends convert ideas. <laughs> Let me tell you, thousands of ideas flow by every day. Yes. But only few pick it up. Why? Because they don't know the mechanism of converting. 
they don't know why. Because, for example, I want to talk about this. So every idea that flows in the line of this, immediately I pick it up, I do what? I write it down. But there are thoughts that could have just passed me by before. <laughs> do you understand? Yes. There are thoughts that could have just passed me by, it will just go by. And that's why uh, it is said that opportunities never arise for those who do not prepare. The first point of operation is to be able to ask yourself why. It sets you in that place where when you begin to see the things that go in line with what you want to achieve or where you want to go, you begin to take them. So they convert time. Convert time. Already you know why you want to do and you know when you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So every time is precious to you. You know how to use it. Of course, even myself, I get so lazy sometimes. And this also we must learn. And I want to tell you this. Please, learn to rest. No matter how much you are so gingered about what you have got or what you get here and you want to achieve at home, please find the balance between rest and work. I'm telling you as, a, as someone who has broken down from work. That rest, you don't want to rest, you will rest it all. <laughs> <laughs> so when I asked this, he said, sleep for as much time as it will take you to be most efficient when you are up. Because the most important thing is when you are up, how efficient are you? So please, I beg you, learn the balance between what? Sleep and rest and work. Not necessarily sleep, but rest and work. Please, don't break down. Please, I beg you. So they convert ready-made materials. And this is the principle of creation after creation. So God did not create the chair you are sitting on now. It's from what? It's from iron that God created. God did not create food. It's from plants that God created. You know, a lot of other things we can mention. So when someone is saying God created an imperfect world, no. The perfection of the world is you. So it is you who has to look at the world and begin to create the other things that do not exist. And that's what legends do. Okay? So legends also convert experiences. Listen, first hand, second hand, and third hand, who knows the difference? First hand experience is what happens to you. Second hand experience is what you see. Third hand experience is what you are told. So you must know how to convert all of those. I believe uh, probably Dr. Anno will teach you tomorrow on how to convert a book. And this is going to be very important. Every information is important. What you know, what happened to you, what you see, what you are told. And what you are told comes in the sense of what you will read too, okay? The information you get, but it's not, you were not there when it happened. Yeah, so they are the first, second, third, and the experience. They know how to convert it, okay? And the second, the most important one is they know how to convert themselves. Mm. They know how to convert themselves. Mm. They are malleable. They know how to, that's why Paul says to the Romans, uh, to the, when I'm in, uh, to the Romans, I'm, uh, to the, in Rome, I'm a Roman, and to the Jews, I'm a Jew. So they are malleable. They know how to convert themselves to fit the purpose. They are not hypocrites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they are not hypocrites. They just know how to convert themselves to get what they need to get them done. All right, so they finish. So they look at the end before they begin and through the process. And what, what keeps them through is what? Is why. So why will also help you through the process of what? Delayed gratification. This is a principle that books must be written about and taught to the Nigerian and African communities. Mm -hmm. We must learn delayed gratification. We must learn mm -hmm. delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. So in part of finishing, legends also reproduce themselves. They reproduce themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you look at DSA now and, and the things he's teaching you, why is he teaching you? He's teaching you so you can know what he knows. Mm -hmm. And when you know what he knows, you probably do what he's doing or maybe even more. Mm -hmm. So that means he's reproducing himself. And you too, you go and do, and I hope you'll be able to teach people so that you also can do what? Reproduce yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what legends do. And legends know the, the, the place of team building. They know they must build a team because no one is self-sufficient. No one is self-sufficient. There's no legend in this world who you will never hear that he had a 2IC that you've never heard about. Or you've probably never heard about you. Some of them you hear about them, some of them you don't. Mm. But there's always somebody who is behind them to supporting them. Mm. 
-hmm. And that's what it is. They know how to build teams. They don't use people, but they build, mm -hmm. they build people and they build a team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's all about service. The essence of your legendary status or ever, everything you want to do must be because you want to serve. Okay, it must be because what? You want to serve. It's not for the name call. It's not so that they can call you legend. It's so that you can live at the end of your life and say, I've served my life out. Okay? And so, because you've served your life out, people then will be able to say, you are a what? You are a legend. All right. So, the principle of recycling. Legends understand the principle of recycling. They know how to do what? Recycle their pain. Mm -hmm. Principle of recycling is that there's a product they used it to the point where it finishes, and it probably is almost useless, right? And then they pick it up again, and then refurbish it, and then use it to make a new product. So when you get to the point of pain, you get to the point of it's an end in itself. So legends know how to take this pain and use it as a product. And that's why you have so many beautiful hymns that were written from the place of pain. That's why so many books were written from the place of pain. That's why a lot of people who know how to convert their pain are legends now, because they just knew how to recycle their pain. So they know how to recycle history, their failures, their regrets. I want you to repeat after me. Nothing in life is a waste. Nothing in life is a waste. But everything is a waste until, it is, until its use is found. But everything is a waste until its use is found. Is that clear? Yes. Nothing in life is a waste. Yes. But everything is a waste until its use is found. So that's why <laughs> this thing will keep lying here until we know why, what are we going to do with it. You understand? So everything is a waste until its use is found. So the undisputed power of conversion, why you must convert is that it gives meaning, it provides result, it brings relevance, and it immortalizes. Okay? So it gives what? Meaning. So after you've converted your life experiences, your pain, your, your history, and now you're a legend, you now realize that your life has meaning. You now realize that you had results in the things you wanted to do. You now realize that it made you relevance. Without service, there's no relevance, okay? Because you can be able to do a lot of things and people still don't want you. Why? <laughs> because you were not serving. You were there for yourself and they say, no, we don't, this guy's too toxic. You, you have those people, right, in, in your communities that you know you can do, but you don't want him. <laughs> you see? As much as you can do, but you don't want him. It immortalizes. So the act of converting and building product make your name go there. So that's why you have a book. If you have a book, if you ever write a book, till you die, your name is on that book. Mm -hmm. And anyone who picks it will read your name, that this book is from Bamishaye Victor, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a gift for everybody here. Uh, I have two books. But Thank not offhand. So let this one go around for everybody. Wow. So this is my gift for you. <laughs> so this is a uh, but not offhand. I tried to detail my life experience and the principles that helped me to survive after losing both parents. So I was asking myself, will I still achieve the things I want to achieve, mm -hmm. even though I don't have both parents to support me now? Mm -hmm. So th that's why the main question here, th it's not a story of telling you what happened or how, how they died. No, no, no. And it's not lamentation. Mm -hmm. It's principle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who is responsible for the outcome of a man? Is it what happened to him, the people around him, or the man himself? Mm -hmm. So that's what I answered in this book. Okay. And this one, anyone who is interested can, is my latest book, can get a copy for $10. Okay. Yeah, so it's yeah. Rebirth, yeah. How Values Can Transform a Nation as Complex as Nigeria. Wow. So wow. Uh, a lot of, DS has written a lot of books about Nigeria, but for me, this is my own idea of how I think Nigeria can really change. Mm. And that is by imbibing certain values and some of them I've put in this book. And without those values, nothing will change because it is the people that build institutions and institutions that make nations. So put weak people in strong institutions, it will collapse. Mm -hmm. So I've argued that in this book and you can get your copy after. Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh.